what's in the box? Hey everyone, Jesse Shade from Awfully Good Movies here. And as much as I love watching bad movies at home for my show, it doesn't give me much time to watch them when they hit the theater. So in compiling this list of the top 10 worst movies of 2014, I went to the ultimate forum of public opinion on film, the Internet Movie Database. As such, this list is made up of the lowest rated movies of this past year, from the highest user rating to the lowest. And we're only considering the 2014 movies that got a significant theatrical release in America. No straight to video flicks, no Bollywood musicals, and no movies that can't even manage to have a poster on their IMDb page. Yeah, that's right. Suck it, Inga Anna Soluthu! So, without further ado, JoeBlow.com and Awfully Good Movies proudly present the top 10 worst movies of 2014. Number 10, God's Not Dead. Through a highly publicized grassroots campaign and a highly touted cameo by Duck Dynasty's Willie and Corey Robertson, who I guess count as celebrities, sadly, this Christian morality tale became one of the biggest box office surprises of this past year. But when you take religion out of it, God's Not Dead is just a lousy movie, at least in the eyes of IMDb voters. Believe in whatever God you want to believe in, Jesus, Buddha, Xenu, whatever. But when the biggest names in your cast are Kevin Sorbo and Dean Cain, you're probably not going to have a quality motion picture on your hands. Unless the Asylum ever decides to beat Zack Snyder to the punch and do Hercules vs Superman. <laughs> oh dude, that'd be badass. I mean, it'd be awful, but badass! Number 9, Tammy. Back when Bridesmaids came out three years ago, Melissa McCarthy was primed to become America's sweetheart. I mean, when you get a freaking Oscar nomination for a comedic performance, you know you've hit a nerve. But even though it was a box office hit, Tammy did not end up leaving a good impression on audiences or critics. What do you expect though when the trailers tell you next to jack shit about the plot? Seriously, I saw this trailer a hundred thousand times in the theater and had the impression that this movie was just 90 minutes of Melissa McCarthy dancing to Coolio and failing to rob a fast food joint. <laughs> she can't dance to hip hop. She's not black. <laughs> she can't jump over that counter. She's not athletic. Hardy fucking hard. Next movie. Number eight. The Single Moms Club. Say what you will about Tyler Perry as a filmmaker, the voters at IMDb certainly have, but the man knows how to please his core audience. But when he decides not to don that signature Medea wig, the results tend to fail financially as well as critically, and at a $16 million gross, The Single Moms Club was no exception. Even with the ubiquitous presence of Terry Crews. Uh, seriously, that dude is everywhere these days. Does he sleep? But with his acclaimed performance in David Fincher's Gone Girl a few months later, Perry has proved that he just may have a future outside of that floral dress after all. He was just far from reaching it with this flick. Number 7, A Haunted House 2. Remember when the members of the Wayans family made an effort to make funny comedies, both on TV and in the movies? Well, over the past couple of years, their understanding of humor has clearly been devolving especially in the case of Marlon Wayans. And though last year's A Haunted House was a financial success, his follow-up to it this year proved to be a flop with audiences as well as critics. Hey Marlon, take my advice. The horror genre has already become a parody of itself. You don't need to do a damn thing. Number six, Ouija. Speaking of horror movies, here's a prime example of how far that genre has sunk. A horror movie based on a fucking board game. Because movies based on Hasbro board games always turn out good. Balance it! Though Ouija boards have proven to be an effective device in horror movies like The Exorcist, making them the entire basis of your plot is clearly not that good an idea. And though we still get great horror movies released under the radar now and then, mainstream audiences usually have to put up with the cheap thrills of flicks like Annabelle, No Good Deed, and Ouija. They may make money, but they sure as shit don't stick with you once you've left the theater. Number 5, The Legend of Hercules. Despite its mediocre reception, I found Brett Ratner's version of Hercules to be a pleasant surprise. It was fast-paced, had some good performances, and didn't take itself too seriously. Rennie Harlan's version of Hercules, however, which was released earlier this year to beat Ratner's flick to the punch, was said to be slow as molasses, badly acted, and cheap looking by the few people who saw it as well as critics. But as far as I can see, both versions of the Hercules story suffer from the same thing, a significant lack of throwing bears into space. <laughs> Number four, the identical. 
Yeah, you forgot this happened, didn't you? A Christian-based reimagining of what would have happened if Elvis Presley's stillborn twin had instead survived, got adopted by another family, and happened to become an Elvis impersonator himself, with name stars like Ray Liotta, Ashley Judd, and Seth Green co-starring alongside an actual Elvis impersonator? But what if we couldn't afford the rights to any of Elvis's songs? What if we used some songs written by the director's brother and nephew instead? And what if we released it in nearly 2,000 theaters on a weekend with literally nothing else coming out to try and get the same surprise box office success of other recent faith-based films. Well, then you would get an enormous bomb of a movie that gets laughed out of theaters after three weeks and is now well on its way to becoming another underground classic along the lines of The Room and Birdemic that's so bad, it's good. Number three, Devil's Do. I guarantee you that the pitch of this movie was four words. Found footage, Rosemary's baby. In fact, I think that's all the script consisted of as well. But unlike Rosemary's Baby, and much like most found footage movies being pumped out every other week by Hollywood these days, this flick did not find the favor of critics or audiences, and will probably be long forgotten 40 some years from now. In fact, the only thing that will be remembered about this horror stinker 40 years from now is that devil baby attack viral video that they made to promote it. <laughs> Number 2 left behind. Just when you thought Nicolas Cage's career couldn't possibly sink any lower, along comes the worst thing to happen in his career since the IRS. A rebooted adaptation of the immensely popular Christian book series about a ragtag group of people who are left behind on Earth when the rapture arrives. It's like this is the end, but unintentionally funny. And even with Cage co-starring alongside a megastar cast, including that squinty guy from One Tree Hill, that girl who won the sixth season of American Idol and Mrs. McFly, this flick failed to find any audience, let alone a Christian one. But even with this abysmally small box office, producer slash writer Paul Lalonde made it clear on the movie's Facebook page that he still intends to make two sequels. Whether or not Nicolas Cage will be coming back for them remains to be seen because that dude clearly needs some money. So let's just hope that their Left Behind trilogy doesn't end up making Kirk Cameron's Left Behind trilogy look like a masterpiece in comparison. And speaking of Kirk Cameron, it's time for the movie that IMDb users consider the number one worst movie of 2014. Saving Christmas. Oh, no, no, scratch that. Literally, as I write this video, Kirk Cameron's semi-documentary on how the Christ got taken out of Christmas has beaten Birdemic, Disaster Movie, Baby Geniuses 2, and Manos to become not just the worst movie of 2014, but the number one worst movie of all time on IMDb's bottom 100. Now granted, this is probably just the work of internet denizens who haven't even seen the movie and are just mocking Cameron's efforts to up the movie's audience rating on Rotten Tomatoes, which have backfired miserably. But if there's anyone who deserves to be crapped on more than Friedberg and Seltzer or Torgo or Talking Babies, it's Kirk Cameron and his ranting against Muslims, homosexuality, evolution, and women's rights over Fox News and social media. Again, believe what you want to believe. I don't have a problem with that. But when you try to use religion to spread intolerance of other people's beliefs as much as this guy has, and make crappy movie after crappy movie as an excuse to spread it, it's gonna backfire inevitably. And nowhere is that more hilariously evident than in the case of Saving Christmas. So congratulations, Kirk. You've managed to outsuck not just the rest of the bad movies released this past year, but the rest of the bad movies released throughout the history of film. That is truly a Christmas miracle. Thanks, Jesus! And there you have it, folks, the top 10 worst movies of 2014, as determined by the fine community of voters at IMDb. Hopefully you may just see one of these flicks get picked on by me in a future episode of Awfully Good Movies, which you can find every other week here on the YouTube channel of JoeBlow.com. So with that, I'm Jesse Shade wishing you a happy crappy Christmas and a croco-ducking New Year. A croco-duck. There's just nothing like it. Joe Blow, he sure likes to drink a lot. Joe Blow watches movie like the hero man. Joe Blow, he's not just like the summer high yet. Joe Blow gets fucked up and he's supposed to shit. Hey everyone, Jesse Shade here from Awfully Good Movies. Thank you so much for watching. 
If you want to see me take on more good bad movies, click on any of the links you see here, or subscribe to see this show alongside all the great content that we offer here at JoeBlow.com. And remember, I love you. Uh, wait, that sounded wrong. But I do love you, though.